this. Can you do me a favor and cancel this out? What I do when I'm trying to write a song is I hear the melody in my head, and I sit down and I know it's going to start on one, three, or five, so I try that. Now, this song happens to start on six <laughs> because it's a jazz song. And we'll find out what the song is in a little bit. But, you see, I just wrote it out as a set of number codes, right? And then if I follow that number code, if I follow that number code, I could just write out a song that's just nothing but a big, see like this, a big batch of numbers. Right? And this allows me to write out the melody and then take it home to work on it. Okay? The next thing I have to do is figure out the rhythm to these. I have to figure out the rhythm to that. Well, we did all that code word rhythm stuff before, and I showed you how to hear rhythms and write them down. So you older people already know how to do that. You new people, I can't take the time to explain it. But trust me, there's a way of doing this where you can hear this stuff by ear. And then what you can do is sit down and try to figure out the rhythm. Now, once you figure out the rhythm, all you do is notate it as I did. I put flags on the numbers. First I got the numbers, then I put little flags on the numbers to give me the rhythm. Now the question is, what do you think the song is? See, it starts on six, right? So I go one, two, three, four, start here on six. And what do I do? Valentine's 
starts on that first note below, called the ledger line, with the number 6. Now again, if I went and put a note on that line, on that number 1 line there, throughout this whole piece, then I'd have the same thing as the flashcards, wouldn't I? So if I'm seeing a note here, which is my reference, and the first note starting here, I can see that that is a third, a distance of a third. And it's starting on the note 6 and going to the note 1. So I have all the information I need to know about that right there. Uh, if there's a note here, if I take that note and think of this as being a, uh, a note under it, I can see that distance is a fourth. Can you see that? And if I have a note way up here, and I think of that line, having a note, I can see here that distance is a seven. And now all I need to do in order to number the music is recognize the distance. And in my own brain, I have to hallucinate a dot appearing on that one line <laughs> all the way along there and help me. Now, after a while, you don't need the dot. I just see the line, and I think of the line as my reference point, and I'm measuring every distance to that line. So, look through the piece here quickly. Six, seven, one. Does that make sense to you? And then it goes seven, one, seven. Then it goes back to six. Six, seven, one, seven, one, seven, six, seven, one. Now it jumps a fifth. One, five, comes down a note. Four, comes down a note. Three, comes down a note. Two. And you can see that two is just above the line. So that's a two. Then, one, two, three, two, three, two. One, two, three, two, three, two. One, two, three, up a fifth to seven, six, five. Now you see that four has a little symbol on it. That little symbol is called a neutral. And whenever you have, whenever you have flats in a key signature, the neutral sign is getting rid of the flat. So it acts like a sharp. And that's one reason it looks like a sharp. It almost looks like a sharp. So whenever I have a neutral up here in the music, it's trying to get rid of one of these flats, which makes that whole line move up a half a step. So what happened is, it looks like the number it is, in this case the number four, but the neutral sign adds a sharp to it. So we would call that four sharp. And that would be between the number five and four, there's a five flat or a four sharp. There's a little black note in between there. So that would be four sharps. And then it goes, it says four and it's got a flat in front of it. Now the reason they put that flat there is to restore the flat that they had just removed in the previous measure with the neutral sign. And that is not necessary. Uh, there's a rule in music that when we go past the bar line everything resets. So when they put that in there, that four flat in there, they're just doing it to remind you that you should have done that. Therefore confusing you and making you think that you're looking at a four flat when there is no such note. There's no such note as four flat. Well, so you when the sharp key and a, a neutral sign, <coughs> a sharp key, well, what you're not. Okay, then what happens is the neutral sign becomes a flat. The neutral sign is the only symbol which is androgynous. It's a hermaphrodite. Uh, <laughs> And it, it's, it's interesting that they chose that particular symbol. We started, the flats actually came from a B. When they were writing in the old days, and these people carved out letters, they took a small B that was italicized, and that became the flat, B flat. So they used the letter B. Then later they used the sharp symbol, or the pound symbol, to create the sharp. We know it as tic-tac-toe. <laughs> right, tic-tac-toe. But then what happened is, if they wanted to get rid of one of these and make it go sharp, or they wanted to get rid of one of these and make it go flat, they came up with this symbol, the neutral. And I don't know if you can notice it, but if I cover this part, it looks like a flat, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And if I let, this, if I let the lines uh, fall through, 
looks like a sharp. So what happens is if I have a key signature that has sharps in it, every time I see a neutral, it acts like a flat. And if I have a key signature that has flats in it, when I see a neutral, it acts like a sharp. Huh. It does the exact opposite of the key signature. Wow. And that's all. There's nothing else to it. 